Okay, well, hi everyone, and thank you very much for watching. Um, Liam Hertry here today with another episode of Presenting Champions, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, very excited um, to talk to this man, Josh Watson, known as Stay Down, recently coming off um, a massive win in BKFC where he defeated Greg Hardy in the second round. Um, that fight has been seen around the world. It's gone viral. So um, we're going to be talking about that, maybe a little bit about Josh's career outside of that as well in terms of his future plans, a few of his past fights in MMA and bare knuckle boxing as well. So uh, we've got a lot to talk about, but absolutely incredible win. So, Champ, thank you for making time for this. Man. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, know. No, it's, it's funny you say the gone viral and gone around the world. Um, I ran into a guy yesterday who's a, I don't know, business owner. And uh, he was like, yeah, the night of the fight, I was in Australia. And he's like, the or the night after or soon after, because obviously time difference. Um, he was like, they're playing the review or the replay of the fight on the TV down there. So I don't know, like, I mean, I'm sure there's more than just ESPN. And so he got to see it on their TV in his hotel. And then he said the next day or two days later, he was in Japan and whatever TV source they had there for news, uh, it was on the news in Japan. And I was like, wow. That, I mean, like, I get it, like, in the sense of, like, out here, I never saw it on the news. I just saw it, like, on, you know, Yahoo.com and, you know, MSN.com, uh, New York Times, uh, a whole bunch of just websites. But I never actually saw it physically on the TV. So that was pretty uh, cool to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, let's talk a little bit more about that because we'll get into like the fight itself. But in terms of the responses you've been getting, like interview requests, you know, your phone's probably blowing up. I mean, basically, how are you handling being famous at the moment, you know, from that fight and how it's blown up everywhere? Like you say, it has, I mean, I'm in the UK as well. It's been all over the place over here with like articles on how big bare knuckle boxing is getting and that type of right. thing but making reference to you and, and the Greg Hardy fight and everything like that. So it's all around the world, man. How does that feel in your own words, basically? Um, humbling, you know, like it's, it's, it's nice. Um, you know, I've, everybody who's been reaching out, trying to get interviews, they've all been, you know, respectful. And um, honestly, like we discussed earlier, my voice has been shot, you know, getting over this sickness. Um, if my throat was better, I would have lined them up, just bang, 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 bang. But, uh, you know, I'm there. I'm that guy, you know. Just, other than coming home to going straight to work, other than that, I haven't been training, obviously. So, like, I would have been able to just knock out as many interviews as I can just to keep my name out there and keep everybody happy, you know. Um, that's that's what I'm about. And so everybody's been pretty good with me, keeping me limited to, like, one or two interviews a day and – working around you know you're in the uk working around the time difference what what time is it there what do you got seven hour difference yeah it's about uh i think it's 6 p.m yeah just after 6 oh, p.m over here now so yeah oh, seven, eight hour difference. eight hours that's right yeah yeah it's a big one out of my ass yeah. um yeah so everybody's been pretty good with that too that's awesome, man. Well, I'm happy that you're getting like the respect and the recognition that, that you deserve and everything. And I mean, I'd imagine a lot of people have heard about you like for the first time through this. Personally, I'd yeah. heard of you before, um, like before the Greg Hardy fight and everything. I'd heard of you before that, but I can imagine it's opened up um a lot of stuff to some new fans and everything. So I mean it's got to be good. It's got to be good. So talking about the fight itself, obviously, what I'm going to do, first of all, is just go back slightly before the fight on the build yep. because yep. everyone's looking at it as an upset, but I don't get the feeling it was an upset to you, you know, from the way you've spoken about it afterwards and everything. On the build up to the fight, how are you uh, actually feeling right like right before? Um, aside from being sick? Uh, no, yeah. I felt good. Um, it was... Um... It was one of those things where I wanted to stay off the radar because I knew I, I already knew I wasn't on his radar. Uh, he was looking past me. He was, you know, thinking about this fight April 29th with Ben Rothwell. He didn't care about me. He figured he was just going to steamroll through me because, you know, in his mind, he was in the NFL and he fought in the UFC and I'm nobody. And in, you know, the world spectrum, I'm a nobody. That doesn't bother me. Um, so I didn't want to do anything to put myself on his radar. You know, my man, you know, BKFC, they tend to have some wild weigh-ins and, you know, you can get, you can get viral and 
you know, amp stuff up and sell the fight. And it's like the, the, the fight didn't need to be sold in my eyes. Like people were already tuning in, whether they, whether they were my fans, knowing I was going to pull out the upset or if they were uh, Greg Hardy's, you know, fans that were just like there to support him. There wasn't, you know, me, me, you know, handing him an inhaler during weigh-ins wasn't going to make more people buy the subscription. You know, that because that was going to be my thing. Like, if he was a dick uh, leading up to, but he wasn't. He was, he was super respectful. Um, hey! He was super respectful. He, um, you know, but, it, but to the point of, again, being cocky and not caring about me because... <laughs> No, it's okay. So I can just see a little bit in the yeah. background, man. Like I said, yeah. don't worry. Life is life. All right. It's all yeah, good. They're, they're fighting over toys. Um, but yeah, the um, stop it. Hey, stop it. So they, um, he, he was just looking past me. You know, like even before we walked up the ramp um, to uh, do the weigh-ins, we were, you know, like a foot apart from each other. And like, you know, I gave him a little dab. Like, hey, here we go, bro. Like, you know, like I kept like this friendship like it's cool mentality didn't even i didn't want to try to ruffle his feathers and i know it comes across like almost like a like i i didn't want to piss him off but it was not that it was more so i didn't want him to think about me i didn't want him to pay any attention to me i mean shit they had him interview because that girl broke her leg the fight before mine so there was like oh we have to kill time and they pulled him out and like he literally did a on the spot interview three minutes for walking down the ramp i'm like man if i was in that position i wouldn't have done that like I'm, my mindset's in the fight i can't no like let's record something more earlier in the day you know like way earlier in the day my mind is on the fight and you know but it was funny because like you know so i looked out that little holding area those little curtain like square for you to stand in i just like kind of like looked and i'm like he's even doing an interview right now like he is not even thinking about me and i haven't even actually watched the um the pay-per-view to see even what he said you know because it doesn't bother me but uh you know it's just it is what it is i just wanted to stay off his radar so that he wouldn't think about me and you know that was that was my plan yeah and it worked i mean it's it's actually a great strategy by the way of actually being low-key because a lot of people would have tried to like get um you know inside his head and try to like right. mess his head and do all that but actually that like staying off and like he was almost distracted and like oh i'm not thinking about this i like that man and i think that's that's quite cool as well for um other fighters watching this as well they can pick up on that as a technique that could work in certain situations so you know fair enough fair enough so obviously the fight itself, I mean, everybody's seen it, everybody's seen the knockout. There's not loads to say, but just watching the fight is still different than obviously you being actually in there. So just talk to us about like basically your memories from the fight itself and when you did realize you'd uh, you'd won, what actually goes through your mind in, in that moment as well? I mean, that would be good to, to touch on just in that split second where you're like, man, I've got him, he's down, you know? So um, the biggest memory of the whole thing was getting poked in the eye. You know, um, the first, you know, when I came out, I attacked him, you know, we separated the first jab he threw. I didn't even realize that I just punched me until we saw the pictures afterwards and he finger right in the eyeball and I couldn't see out of my right eye for a good minute, minute 15, minute, minute 30 even. So I was blinded. And then this eye, I saw like three of them and I was like, oh man, so like, so going back and looking and even feeling myself in the fight, I was like, I ain't being way too flinchy. Like he would like faint and I'm like breaking at the hip, just totally looking like a spaz. And uh, that part like, you know, bothered me and um, uh, people that, you know, that when you fight, when you train, when you're nervous or um, like scared, you you tense up therefore you gas out way 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 quicker so i immediately went from being super calm and like let's do this to i can't see nothing so i was really 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 tense and it caused me to gas super fast so once my vision came back i kind of calmed down a little bit he threw me to the ground 
cool. I took my sweet ass time getting up. My uh, my coach even said afterwards, he was like, the way you got up scared me. Cause I was like, Oh no, he's like, he's broken or he's out of it. I'm like, no, I was just trying to take my sweet ass time to get up so my eye can recover. And so I can recover breathing purely just the plan. Um, and then um, as my vision was coming back, you know, I got that clinch and rather than fighting for the clinch and um, further exhausting myself, I was like, Nope, I'm just going to get this break, you know, by my time. And, uh, you know, got him with that knockdown right at the very end. And uh, when I dropped him, I knew it wasn't an ending one. You know, it, he was he was rattled. And uh, when I stepped back, that's when just the waterfall of blood came down over my face. And, oh, yeah, and as he went down, um, you know, I heard my coach say 13 seconds. You got 13 seconds. So I was like, shit, this looks like this might be a bad cut on my forehead. I need to. I need to put in some work. So I'm like, stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's go stand up. Like I wanted him to get stood up faster so we could go. Cause I was like, I was going to leap right in and try to drop his ass again, hopefully ending the fight. Um, but obviously didn't get that chance. And if you, and it's funny too, cause if you watch the video, when it like, when that bell rings, I was like, like, damn it. I want to go. And, uh, you know, we're in the corner. Um, there's a little bit of miscommunication. Or, let me see. Different people saw how my corner, ha how, what happened in my corner differently. Um, again, all eyes are on Greg. All video cameras are on Greg. Greg went down. All cameras are on him. Normally, when uh, someone goes down, there's at least one shot of the person who knocked the person down standing there. You don't even see me. Um <clears throat> So you don't even get an idea of how big the cut on my whole forehead was. You kind of see it go as I'm going into the corner. <clears throat> they, you know, they treat it. Not a big deal. Um, not once the blood's in my eye. I'm, I'm cool. And um, when I stood up, he gave me like one last like swipe to put some Vaseline in it, you know, clog it up a little bit. And he got it in my eyeball. And I stood up and I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, wait. Now I can't, like, it was, I was shocked because I'm fine. I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, oh, I'm catching my breath, I'm good. I stood up, I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Now I can't see. Mergliata comes over and he's like, wait, what? And that's like, and, and the doctor was already up on the side of the apron, basically kind of looking from afar because rather than, rather than Mergliata come over and go, Hey, we need a doctor. Look at this. And the doctor has to get out of his chair, climb up, whatever. The doctor's ready. He's, he's right there waiting. So he's like, all right, am I looking at this? And there's like a moment of, well, uh, limbo where, you know, like what's going on. And I'm like, I looked at the cut man. I'm like, wipe my eye. And he like wiped it. And I'm like, no, wipe my fucking eye. And he like, he, as he was wiping, you kind of see me like push into it because I'm like, he's just like, being easy. I'm like, no, like fucking smear whatever's in my eye, get it out. And he did. I'm like, cool. And I looked at Margaret, I'm like, let's go. And everybody's kind of like vision and when they watched it live and when they watched it on the um on the cameras, it looked like it looked like they were trying to like get doctor stoppage or the doctor was trying to at least look at it. And everybody's like, oh man, that was badass how you just ignored the doctor. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't ignore him. Like they didn't, they didn't actually say, hey, let's let's look at this. But it looks like it was, and it looks like I'm like, no, we're fighting, let's go. And it's like, come on, like you think that they're gonna be okay with it? Oh no, he really wants to fight. We won't let the doctor see it. We're good. <laughs> but um, yeah, so when he got when I dropped him in the second round, I knew it was over. Um uh, you know, I got stay down on my knuckles. I, I rocked the whole stay down thing for damn 15 years now, I think. And I don't have that like picture where I knock somebody out and I'm standing there holding my knuckles up, you know, doing the whole stay down. And so that was a goal. And I was like, boom, he's down. Cool. I don't think he's getting back up. Do it. So I did it. And even in my head, I'm like, if he stands back up, cool. Even more of a of a message because I'm gonna put him back down, and then later on it can be like I told you to stay down. But mm -hmm. you know I didn't get to that. But I knew when that thing when that landed and the way he just flopped, I was like, she's not getting up from that. Was, I mean, I just I just lifted a 310 pound man off the ground with a punch. He's not getting up. 
Absolutely, man. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, you could tell from the way he went down and everything. Super cool. Obviously, a big factor of this is you proved everybody wrong. And I just want to highlight this as well, because when I was like, I don't know, reading stuff, watching interviews, whatever, like everything on the build up to the fight, it was just a lot of it was quite dismissive of you, I'm sorry to say. And it was very focused on Greg. I mean, you know that. But obviously, you know, you proved all the people wrong. I mean, you will approve some people right who support you as well. But you will approve the majority of people wrong who sort of wrote you off and said, oh, you know, this guy. So specifically talking about that, and I mean, talking about now, you know, you've done it. What are your thoughts on, like, being basically such an underdog, coming out on top, you know, and what everyone's saying now in terms of, like, what are the people who were writing you off and saying, oh, this guy is going to be out of there in a round or two, like, saying now, have they have they mostly turned tail and they're, like, supporting you or they've eaten their words or, you know, you get where I'm going with this one type of thing. Yeah, totally. Um, I think more so the people that, it's all the higher ups and it's and it, I, like, I wasn't, I wasn't picked to be the, the heel. I was, I was picked to fill a spot, you know, like I think he had an opponent lined up and he fell through. And I mean, I took this fight on four and a half weeks notice, yeah. you know, and on that big of a headlining fight, that's a short notice. Um, so like, it's not like, it wasn't like they had a shit ton of people that they were like, Oh, this is winnable. And they picked that, you know? Um, but uh, as much as I was the underdog and as much as that, everybody that was tight, that's tight in the community of bare knuckle, they all saw it the other way, mm -hmm. you know, um, they all, you know, like walking through the hotel, all the fighters, you know, even the people that were in his corner or um, in his, yeah, because you got red and blue, everybody that was even on his, they were just kind of like, here we go. Like, you got this. Like, a lot of, a lot of support in that sense. Um, you got a lot of support from guys from the bare knuckle that, like, you know, are annoyed with the UFC guys coming through because, you know, they get all the, the spotlight and they just, they walk in with zero and zero and it's like headlining fights it is what it is. They're names. Um, and then you got like, you know, a few of the other people that are part of the organization, maybe not the higher, higher ups, but they're part of the organization enough to where they're like, they've been around, they've seen it. They're like, yeah, here we go. You got this. Let's like, let's do this. And then majority of, so I never, I mean, I already knew that nobody liked Greg Hardy. I knew that. I didn't realize how bad I thought it was just like, People who knew, knew. I didn't realize that, like, everybody knew, like, about his past. And, like, when uh, when BKFC announced his fight, a fight, you look at the comment section, it was, like, for every 20 negative comments, there was, like, one, like, yeah, get him, bro. Like, everybody else is, like, fuck this guy. He's a piece of shit. Woman beater, cheater. Like, all these things. And I'm, like, damn. They just signed a, an automatic heel. Like, everybody hates this guy. Which is funny because even before the fight happened, I was starting to get fans being like, bro, I don't even know who you are, but I, you know, I'm a fan, kick his ass. Um, and then uh and then again, like after the fight, like when like not on my post, but when you look on like BKFC's posts and you look at like MMA junkie posts and all these other ones, you got all these people who have, you know, are UFC fans who've watched him getting beat, you know, left and right in the UFC. And again, everybody still, you know, has a tainted taste in their mouth because of him using the uh, inhaler and cheating on that one fight. So everybody, you know, he, he's a blatant cheater. So nobody likes him again. But yeah, everybody's just, you know, like biggest thing is that, you know, they're like, he's got a glass jaw. Why is he going from sports where he had big gloves to no gloves? You know, and that was always my, uh, my biggest thing leading up to it. I knew he didn't want to get touched. Mm. Um, you know, he, he got dropped with the four ounce gloves and then, uh, he took box, did a boxing match. And when he fought, um, um, uh, Ramen. I, yeah. Ramen. Yeah. Yeah. When he fought him, there was like an 80 pound difference. It was like two for 40 versus three twenty, And with what? 12 ounce gloves on, we'll call it. And Hardy got popped. Even with that, and you saw the look in his face, he didn't even like that. And it's like, bro, that's an 80-pound difference. 
and big gloves. I'm like, what are you going to do when I'm only 20 pounds difference, maybe with no gloves? It's over. You're not going to, you're not going to come back from it. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the non weekend, uh, fans the people who have been around for a minute they all know this and that was like a reoccurring thing they're like how's this guy gonna withstand a bare knuckle punch I mean, he's not gonna um so as much as i was the underdog i think i was more so the underdog because people didn't know who i was um and it was purely off of hardy's name but anybody who knew who I was, what I've done, you know, stuff like that. They, they all had confidence in me. Um, so it was just not many people know. So obviously, you know, not many people can stand up and, you know, obviously the people who come up with um, the betting odds, they don't know who I am. You know, they only heard. And the thing is, is you look at my record, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm leading up to us one and one. And my one victory is against a guy who has three losses. He's 0 and three. It doesn't, Load well for me. It doesn't make me look amazing, you know. Um, so, you know, and it's which is funny because even with um, even with that one, if I want to say during the uh, in the comment section of the bare knuckle, um, B- McElroy, he was like, "Wow, this guy, this guy beats me, and all of a sudden he's a world beater." It's like I'm like, yeah, you know, like don't you know, don't. And then, then there's another one too because again, because it's it's kind of the same way I feel. Um, after I beat Hardy, he commented someplace like, "Hey, does this make my stock go up?" <laughs> and I, and that's how I feel too. Like I'm I'm a big believer in that. Like that's why like after um, Brian knocked me out, I, I'm like, dude, I want to see you fight again. I want to see you fight again next week. Like keep fighting. Like go through because you're talented as fuck, and you're like you can beat a lot of these guys. Most of these guys. I'm like, do it so it doesn't make me look so bad. Go out and start starching other people so that I don't look so terrible. <laughs> That's amazing. That I is, feel. Yeah, like the behind the scenes of it. I love it, man. I mean, it's something, not that it matters now. Personally, I had a feeling um, that you'd win or there was a very good chance of, but it was it was to do with everything we said earlier about like the way he was very, like looking past Dismissive. everything, you know, yeah, like the, like the mindset thing, because... You know how it goes, man. You've been around the fight game a long time. You know, people come together for the face of people are around each other before a fight in any way. And you can often tell at that point who's going to win, not all the time, but a lot of times because of like the confidence and stuff. And uh, I, I took one look at him and I thought, well, you know, he's really not focusing on this. That's all academic. Now, I'd like to hear about how you celebrated and like what you were doing after um such a big win as this i mean i don't know how much people have asked you about that one but um yeah man i mean something like this it's basically changed your life and we'll get to the future in a minute as well because i'd also like to talk about where you go from here in a moment but before we do how did you celebrate what were you up to after the fight um well directly after the fight uh, I wasn't honestly. It was pretty low key. Um, the the bar in the lobby was packed. Walked through, you know. Someone bought me a shot and themselves a shot, and it was like, can't remember now, but I want to say it was twenty four dollars for a shot of Jamo and a shot of Jack. And I'm like, nope, I'm not partying here. Um, some of the uh, the guys that helped me out um, management wise, uh, they had gotten an Airbnb. I honestly thought it was going to be a little bit better of a turnout, you know, more people, whatever, not a big deal. But um, during the, um, or after the fight, sucks fighting so late on the card because they stopped selling alcohol so fast. So I was like walking around, I'm like, what, nothing, nothing, nowhere, no no booze. Like, come on, I want to have a drink. And uh, someone tried to give me some of their beer they had left over. I'm like, I don't drink beer, I drink whiskey. They grabbed us a... Um, I, I had uh, Tony grab me a bottle of Jack and went back to the house. And, you know, it was pretty chill. We were all just hanging out, having a good time. And um, just, it wasn't a rager, you know, it was just, it was funny because we are just sitting there and I had a constant tissue the entire time. It was kind of like dabbing blood. Because uh, like, as I'm like getting sick, so every time like I would like cough, it would like the pressure would like cause like blood to start coming out of my uh, stitches and whatever. Um, and then really that was for the most part it. I went in, you know, crashed at the, uh, the hotel and 
flew back the next day and I was back to work on Saturday. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's what, that's what men do. They, you know, like I don't have that luxury, like some of these other pro fighters that, you know, make enough to continue or, or keep just training and not have to worry about shit. You know, like I, I work. And then uh, I had some, I had already had some college buddies coming into town like planned out months ago. Uh, they came into town on Monday, which was cool because we kind of turned it into like their celebration slash mine, you know, went to the steakhouse and then uh, went, you know, terrified a bunch of strippers because every time they just walk up, they're like, hey, and they're like, oh, Jesus, what happened to your face? And I'm like, oh, nothing. Nothing. Why? What's wrong with my face? So it was, it was pretty funny. Other than that, though, that was really the gist of it, not major, nothing major, you know? Yeah, pretty Surprisingly, chill. Consider, considering I live in Las Vegas, no, nothing major. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that when you were saying about it, man, it's like the place to be for the party, but no, I, I get where you're coming from, you know, keep it, keep it real and everything.